You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Paradigm with host Mikaya. Mikaya will empower you to become aware of your vast potential that's available in each and every one of us in alignment with our soul's desires. So please welcome the host of Living in a New Paradigm, Mikaya Hart. Hello, everyone. This is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And um, today, I'm going to talk about the existence of other realms of being. I, I describe my work, obviously a lot of people who, who listen to me talking say I'm talking about spirituality. I actually don't really like that word very much because it indicates Well, first of all, there are some people who run a mile when they hear that word, and that's kind of sad. Um, But secondly, it indicates that spirituality is something absolutely different and separate from our daily lives. That, in other words, being a being of spirit is absolutely unlike us, something completely different from us. And in truth, we are all beings of spirit who have chosen to manifest here and now on this planet earth. We've chosen to manifest in physical bodies. Um, But our most natural state is um, a formless being of spirit who exists beyond time and space. So what I prefer to say when I describe my teaching is I I prefer to say that what I'm doing is teaching about the nature of reality. Um, Not just the nature of physical reality, but the nature of reality far beyond physical reality. Before, prior to the experience of becoming physical, there is... A vastness, I call it the vastness of being, actually. It's very hard for us to describe because we never talk about it. We we don't know how to put it into words. I don't know how to put it into words. Um, <clears throat> but what I'm going to do today is to try to put into words some of the experiences that we might be having as beings of spirit choosing other forms and what kind of forms a being of spirit might choose and what their agendas might be and whether they are beings that we want to relate to who might be helpful to us um, and how to relate to them because some of these beings that I'm talking about are light years ahead of us in their understanding of what of what is in their brain power, for example, in their wisdom. And um, I've personally had the experience of being in the presence of beings who are, who are like that, who are so wise, knowledgeable, aware, conscious. Uh, we don't even have words to describe it, but so 
profoundly, uh, a million times more aware and conscious and powerful than I, that it's overwhelming and um, even alarming to be in the presence of such beings. So how do we relate to them? How should we relate to them? How can we relate to them? Because they are certainly around us. So we as beings of spirit, where we exist beyond time and space and have a, certainly a much broader awareness or consciousness than we do in human form. Why do we choose to manifest as human on this planet where really our, our um, state of being is kind of akin to a toddler in relation to an educated adult? We are toddlers. We are, we are actually just close to graduating from kindergarten on this planet. Um, we really know very, very little. We understand incredibly little about the, the nature of reality, the vastness of the nature of reality. Um, so you may well ask, why would we choose, because we do choose, um, if you've manifested here on this planet, then it's because you, all that you are, the being of spirit that you are has chosen it. Why would you choose to manifest in such a state of ignorance, if you like? Um, and the answer is, well, in some ways, you could say we get born into darkness. And then when we choose to move into the light, that is a very, very profound choice that in some way benefits the whole cosmos. Um, but also, we learn a great deal from being born into darkness, um, from being born into a state of being where we remember nothing about everything we know, where we remember nothing of the reality that we have come from, the reality that we are, the beings of spirit that we are. Um, we remember nothing about that. And so we begin our existence as human from this incredibly limited perspective forgetting that we come from a limitless perspective. So you might liken it to um, looking, going, so going up the top of a mountain where you have the most incredible view of planet Earth. And you can see all around you, you can see all kinds of things or choosing the opposite and looking in a microscope and looking into the most minutest, tiniest things, a virus, a bacteria. So we, we're choosing that very, very limited, focused perspective because then when we step back into the greater perspective, there are things that we understand, that we know, because we have seen the smallest of small. I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little more about, well, I'm going, we're up for a commercial break right now. And um, when we come back, I'm going to talk about other dimensions. That's probably the next step. Um, but right now, uh, we're up for a commercial break. We'll be right back in a few minutes. And this is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm. Um, just hang in there and we'll be, we'll be back in a few moments. 
There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at L'École des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Hello everyone, this is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, back again. Um, before I go any further, I want to talk about the astral realm. Um, I think probably most of you have heard of the astral realm and perhaps some of you who are listening are familiar with traveling in the astral realm, which is something that um, a lot of us have done. Um, sometimes we don't remember it, sometimes we do. Um, it's actually very common for children to do it. And then because of the way adults react and when they talk about it, they figure that they shouldn't really be doing it and they stop doing it. The astral realm is the opposite of the, um, the flip side, if you like, of the physical realm. You can't have, you can't be in physical form without having an astral form. Um, we sometimes the astral forms become visible. For instance, um, ghosts and poltergeists, and um, well, they're the most common examples of um, astral forms that are seen. Um, a ghost, well, that is an an astral form that has lost its physical form is often um, is often manifesting in a particular space because the physical form died in some horrible trauma in that space. Now, let me just say, I'm going to talk a little more about that. But it's not true of all ghosts that they, that they died in some horrible trauma. Some beings actually do enjoy coming back and hanging out in the astral realm. Um, however, it is true that many of the beings that hang out in the astral realm uh, are a little or perhaps very lost, and um, they need to go to the place where dead people go. <laughs> um, the word psychopomp describes somebody who it's actually literally translates as a, a guide of souls, somebody who can help lost souls who are stuck in the astral realm, who can help them to move on um, to uh, the place where dead people hang out. Um, I One of the books I've written um, is called With the Sun in My Eyes, and it's about 
a woman called Maria Raindancer, who is a psychic reader and a shamanic practitioner. And um, she's been psychic since she was very young. Um, the book was fascinating to write because I really got a look into um, how um, a, a, how someone deals with psychic phenomena when they're very young and and how it can af- affect their lives and change their lives and, and how they can utilize it and, and help others um, if they get the right teachers. <laughs> Um, but she, anyway, in her work, very often comes across ghosts. People ask her to come and do clearings on their houses because they feel like there's something weird, some weird energy going on. And very often when she goes to the space to clear it up, she'll meet with ghosts or astral beings who are stuck there and she'll help them to move on Um because most of them do want to move on. They don't want to be stuck there for the rest of eternity. They actually do kind of want to get things resolved and move on. Um, the astral realm is specifically related to the physical realm. Uh, very often when you have dreams about flying, that is an experience of moving in the astral realm because you can move uh, through space very, very fast, instantly, actually. Um, and the astral realm can really be fun to play in, and it can also be very useful. Like Maria Raindancer, for instance, does a lot of healing in the astral realm. Uh, there are some kinds of diseases and injuries that respond much better to um, to help in the astral realm than they do to help in the physical realm. And people like the Brazilian shaman, St. John of God, um, who could heal people uh, instantly. He probably operates in the astral realm where you can reach into somebody's body and repair a broken bone just by putting it together or, um, you know, maybe somebody's had a very bad cut and um, he could reach into somebody's body and with his hands in the astral realm and repair torn blood vessels and other torn tissue. Some people just have that kind of skill. However, it's very important if you want to understand about the nature of reality to get that there are many, 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 many more realms than just the astral realm. There are, in fact, limitless numbers of realms that exist. Now, this is, again, where we start to have difficulties with language. Um, My teachers, who are... um, a large group of beings who are not in physical forms have told me that a planet is in fact a plane of consciousness. And they've described it a little like um, a movie that we decide we want to manifest on a particular plane of consciousness. And there's a movie going on there, which you might say is a play of light and dark. Um, And you enter that play. You, you are part of the movie and you've actually designed the movie and decided what part you want to play in the movie. Um, but it's a movie. It's not, it's not truthful reality. Now that is to say it is an, an illusion. I want to make it really clear here that I am not putting it down, these plays of light and dark that we choose on different planes of consciousness. I am not putting them down. They are very, very powerful when we're in them. They're everything we know. And we need to learn to allow ourselves to experience them fully and not to belittle our emotions or our experiences. Okay, so I haven't even really managed to get to uh, the concept of dimensions yet. 
and now we're up for another commercial break. But I will be talking about dimensions when we come back. Uh, this is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm. Uh, thanks to BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back in a few moments. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305 705 3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Hello, everyone. This is Mikaya Hartz back again with living in the new paradigm. Um, so dimensions, let's talk about dimensions now. Um, imagine what it would be like if you're, if you're an amoeba, you're, or even a virus, you're this tiny, minute little thing. You have maybe awareness of the first and second dimension, uh, but not a lot more than that. So as we've evolved from those one-celled beings, we've uh, learned all about the third dimension and we're certainly, we as human beings are certainly very familiar with the first, second and third dimensions. Um, the question that then needs to be asked is, so what would it, what would the fourth dimension look like? What would the fifth dimension look like? Right now we most of us anyway, can't see beyond the third. One of the things that is happening on this planet is that we are beginning to become aware of the fourth dimension. And um, it's going to change our reality probably quite considerably. Uh, just imagine how much it changed our reality when we became aware of the third. It's going to open up all kinds of avenues for us. Some of you may have heard of the um, inexplicable light orbs that um, appeared in photographs um, in large numbers um, a few years ago. It actually stopped happening, I think, about a year ago or maybe more like two years ago. Um, those light orbs were very possibly the beginning of us being able to see in the fourth dimension. Um, and some of them don't want to be seen, so uh, they may have hidden themselves deliberately. Um, it's been written about in depth by other people, um, Dr. Michael Ledwith, for instance, and Joan Ocean. So I won't go on any more about the light orbs. But um, the next question to ask is, so how many other dimensions are there? 
My teachers have told me that there are more than 26 dimensions. And I've done workshops um, with them to learn how to identify the presence of other dimensions and how to choose to travel between dimensions. Um, one of the things that they told me is that a chakra is an subjective experience of a dimension. And let me repeat that and put it the other way around. A dimension is an objective experience of a chakra. In other words, the chakras, and I'm assuming most of you have heard of the what we know as the seven chakras that are within the body. Um, what that means is that every chakra is, for want of a better word, a doorway to another dimension. So we know one, two, three, and then the fourth would be the heart. So when we are operating in the fourth dimension, we'll be coming very much from a heart-centered place. And I have to say that is one of the reasons why I'm really looking forward to the future on this planet, because I think things will be very different when everyone is coming from a heart-centered place. Um, the fifth is the throat chakra, the, um, which is it's about communication. When we can operate in the fifth dimension, we will be able to communicate telepathically. Now, that, by the way, will make a huge difference to our existence because when you communicate telepathically, you will not be able to lie. And a great deal of the realities that we experience on this planet are as they are because people lie. So that will really, really change things. Um, I won't go any more on any more about the chakras and the dim dimensions. I just want to make the point that there are um, there are many, many different dimensions, and things are very different when you're operating from, um, let's say, the twelfth dimension than if you were operating from the third. And actually, having said that, I should say one other thing about the dimension, the dimensions. Um, when we, as beings of spirit, choose to manifest as human on this planet, we do so from somewhere around the 13th and 14th dimensions, which are beyond the body and really pretty impossible for us to imagine. But you can choose to to go there, you can practice. It's really a matter of setting intention. You can practice this. Um, you can choose to go there and remember the experience of choosing to be born. You can choose to go there and meet with other humans that you know in those dimensions um, and revisit your friendships with them and revisit the, the choices you made, the discussions you had with those beings and the roles that you decided to play together here on planet Earth. Like perhaps you decided that you, you know, you, you have this friend called Maria and um, you meet her, you're having trouble with her in this dimension, you're having disagreements. You or just you can't understand her or or just uh, all kinds of strange things going on you can choose with and you don't have to talk to maria about this on this on this plane of consciousness but you can choose to connect with her on the 13th and 14th dimensions and then you will be able to revisit the choices that you and she made together and that can really help you to forgive someone and to understand the broader picture. Um, we tend to get very caught up in a lot of negative emotions because our perspectives are so limited. And being able to fall back into a place of greater perspective can really help us to, uh, to understand that we, 
why we made the choices we've made. We're up for another commercial break. And um, when we come back, I'm going to talk about the word spirit. Um, Right now, this is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be right back in a few minutes. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations in classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Hi, this is me, Kaya Hart, back again with Living in the New Paradigm. I'm talking now about the concept of beings of spirit. What is a being of spirit? Where are they? How do we relate to them? What do they think? What do they do? How do we communicate with them? And the and one of the key questions here is that we um, how do we prevent ourselves from getting being affected by spirits who are not benevolent? How do we know whether a spirit is benevolent or not? Um, One of the very important things here, and I'll say this again and again, it's important in life in general, it's important in every situation, is to, um, to set the intention. So I would certainly recommend that you are open to the existence of beings of spirit who are present here and now around us. And I fully acknowledge that some of those beings of spirit are not, um, they're not benevolent. There are actually very few truly evil, truly malevolent spirits, but there are some who are mischievous. And um, some who are, they have their own agenda and they're not interested in helping you. They just want to, you know, play around with the, or they want to, they want to play with you. And that might, you know, you might not want to play with them. You might not want to play the same games. Um, so it is really important to set the intention. And, and I would recommend doing this every day, every morning when you break up, when you, when you wake up, set the intention of being only in communication with other beings of integrity, other beings whose intentions are in alignment with yours for the highest good of all. Um, And when you really, really set that intention, you don't give any space to beings who 
don't have the same intentions as you. And they cannot enter your space without your permission. So when you are very clear about the fact that you, your space is your space and you are not giving them permission, then they can't enter. Now, problems can arise when, when we're talking about a being of spirit whom we have known in this, in this lifetime, you know, a relative, um, and we're very familiar with their presence. And we can often let them in too close and then maybe they don't go away when it's time for them to go away. And then also um, that there are mischievous, unpleasant, undesirable beings of spirit who um, attach themselves to young children, especially when those young children are experiencing trauma. But those are special and specific situations that actually don't occur very often. So um, in general, I would say set the intention that you only want to relate to beings of spirit who have your who have who, who who have your best interests at heart, who can help you and assist you in the path you have chosen. And you will not you will not have to deal with evil or mischievous spirits. Now um, the word spirit usually is used to apply to any non physical life form. However, there are many physical life forms, um, such as trees, rocks, plants, rivers, oceans, places of nature, who have a physical manifestation, but also have what we would experience as um, a spiritual presence. A plant spirit is often called a diva. Um, my grandmother actually was, um, she was a wonderful, kind, gentle woman. And she could see the, the plant divas. She saw them as fairies. Um, and they would relate to her very directly. And consequently, she was the most incredible gardener. She could grow plants that nobody else could grow because she um, she was relating very di directly with the plant spirits and they would tell her what they needed and she would give them what they needed. It's important to remember that everything, in the end, everything wants to be admired and loved. And love heals everything. Everything thrives on love. So that's an important, an important thing to remember in your day-to-day -day life. And you lose nothing by bestowing love on others. You only gain. So I want to talk about uh, communicating with beings of spirit. It's often not a verbal communication. It's more like the kind of communication that comes from the heart or from the belly. You experience it in your body. Um, I quite often find myself having conversations with beings. I feel their presence and then I talk to them. And what actually happens then usually is that my rational brain takes over and starts inventing the answers and I start disbelieving them. Um, so then what, when that happens, I go back to the feeling. What is the feeling of presence? What is the feeling? Going back to feelings is a very important, um, it's a very important thing to remember to do. So you've got to remember to allow yourself to feel your feelings. We're up for another commercial break right now. 
This is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And I'll be right back in a few moments to talk a little more about spirits. So hang in there. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Hello, everyone. This is Mikaya Hart, back again with Living in the New Paradigm. So I'm just talking about... um, the experience of communicating with the spirit world around us. Let me say a little here about being psychic. I've um, I've heard many people say that um, they would love to be psychic. It must be really amazing to be able to tune into non-physical reality with such ease. And to a certain extent, maybe that's true, but... I personally am very glad that I'm not psychic. Um, I think it's a hard path to walk. To be constantly besieged by information that nobody else knows anything about. Um, You might, so you might meet someone on the street and you know, you see that they're going to have an accident um, when they cross the street and you can't stop them from doing it because it really is not okay to um, tell somebody what you're seeing if they haven't asked to see it. And all you're going to do is frighten the person and they're probably going to have the accident anyway because it's, uh, you know, it's a foregone conclusion already anyway. Although it is also true that we can change our futures Um, but when, if we're afraid of what is happening in the future and that's what is motivating us to try to change our futures, then, um, we're only going to create a more fearful future. So anyway, the point I'm making here that is that as a psychic able to see so many different things, you have to be extremely cautious about what you actually say to the people around you who are not seeing the same thing. And, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it requires, it requires a great deal of integrity and you have to be very, very careful. And that can be a hard way to live. Um, not easy to have friends. And then also people become dependent on you to give them advice and that, that isn't good for you and it isn't good for other people. People need to make their own decisions based on their own experience and their own wisdom. And even though a psychic can, can sometimes help a great deal, um, 
sometimes they can just they what giving out that kind of information can simply disempower someone so uh be careful if you're wishing for psychic phenomena um however there is no reason why anyone cannot hear uh, and that's a, again these words are difficult because i don't hear in words, I put it into words, I, I get a feeling, and then I put that into words. Um, if you want to be more in touch with the unseen worlds around you, I would recommend that you um, set the intention of that and then simply sit quietly alone best of all is being in nature but sit quietly alone and listen and you know use use your brain if it seems really ridiculous then well you can ignore it if it's helpful to you then maybe you want to listen to more of it um but above all if it feels good then why not and if it feels bad, then shut it off. It, it is a physical sensation of presence more than, well, for most people, it's a physical sensation of presence more than it is, um, more than it is an actual hearing. That said, there are people who can hear being speak to them. Um, and one very useful thing to recognize is that your existence here on this planet, our existence, <coughs> us as human beings, our existence here on this planet, it tends to be totally focused on the, um, on the world of humans. There are many, many worlds on this planet. There's the world of plants the world of birds, the world of fish, the world of whales, the world of stones, the world of water, and on and on and on. Um, and if you can imagine being a bird, the existence of a bird is a completely different thing from the existence of being a human. It, it expands your awareness and your consciousness of reality to simply tune into those other worlds now and again. It's, um, it's, it can be exciting, fun, and very educational. So allow yourself to acknowledge that you are surrounded by sentient beings, not only in spirit form, but also in physical form. And that some of those beings have access to levels of wisdom, levels of awareness, let's say, that we don't. And I want to tell a little story here to illustrate this. I have a friend who um, has always been able to speak with stones. Now, when we're walking along a beach, for instance, and we see a beautiful stone and we pick it up and take it home, we think that we saw the stone and chose to pick it up. In fact, that stone may have called to us and said, hey, pick me up. I want to go to your house. I want to go with you. Yes, believe it or not, stones, those what we think of as inanimate objects, have the ability to perceive in what we might describe as other dimensions. And when they see a being, a human being, they can see much more than just that physical body. So um, we're up for another commercial break right now. I'm going to talk more about seeing much more than just the physical body when we come back. Um, 
This is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back in a few minutes. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents, and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy, and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Hi, everyone. This is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm. Um, I'm just talking about how uh, it's possible to see, and this is much easier for some people than others, but um, th- th- I do believe this is an ability that we can learn. It's possible to see much more than the physical body, so that when you meet someone, you you can learn to feel feel is a better word perhaps, much more about them than just their physical reality. And what this brings me to is the concept of shamanism um, and shamanic thinking and shamanic ways of being. Um, the word shaman was originally, um, it came from Russia um, when um when Westerners first went to remote places in Russia and met some of the very powerful shamans who were working there, um, they coined the term shaman. And it's been used by indigenous tribes all over the world, so now it's a little bit of a loaded word. But I still want to use it because we have so very little language to describe these very different states of consciousness and how to work with them. Um, I learned how to journey shamanically from Anjali Zarian, who she's now dead. She was a spiritual leader of the Basque people who are the last indigenous group in Europe. They live in the Pyrenees um, between France and Spain, and they've always refused to identify as either French or Spanish. Um, And they've held on to many of those amazing, amazingly powerful ancient ways of being that many of us are seeking these days. when we've become disillusioned with the shallowness of Western ways of being. We are looking for something deeper. Um, And Angelis Arian was a wonderful teacher for me. Um, 
she wrote a book called The Fourfold Way, which describes how to relate to the four different seasons in um, in a, a, a sense of spiritual awareness. Um, shamanic journeying came fairly easily to me, and I do very strongly recommend it to you if you're considering um, expanding your consciousness, let's say, in the ways that I've been speaking about. Um, I lead shamanic journeys. I have led them online, but I lead them in person all over the world. And they, um, they're, they can be profoundly life-changing experiences, mind-opening, awareness-opening. My website is mikayahart.org. Uh, you can contact me through my website, and um, I have written a great deal there about shamanic journeying that you can listen, um, you can read about. Um, and please do contact me if you would like to know more, if you'd like to me to come and lead a shamanic journey in your area or simply need to talk or want some counseling. Um, I do all kinds of counseling. I help people in general to develop a different perspective on reality. So this is me, Kaya Hart, with Living in the New Paradigm, saying goodbye for now. Um, I'll be back again at, on Thursday next week, and I hope some of you will be listening in again. Um, and please do call in if you have questions or specific concepts that you want me to address. So once again, this is me, Kaya Hart, with Living in the New Paradigm, saying goodbye for now. You've been listening to Living in the New Paradigm with your host, Mikaya. Get what you choose and choose what you get each week here on Mikaya Hart's Living in the New Paradigm. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company. 